I've seen a lot of comments around, can you use the NVIDIA Jetson Nano to code? If you code, you've heard about VS Code, you definitely heard a thing or two about Cursor. For some people, Cursor may be a more expensive way of doing AI coding because it's $20 a month. And one thing people seem to be really interested about is can you use a local server and, and use a locally hosted AI model and then code? Well, that's what I wanted to find out. And I do have a NVIDIA Jetson Orion Nano, the eight gigabyte model. So what I wanted to see is if I can host a local model on that, connect it, and then when I code on my Mac, can it actually code for me? Okay, I'm in cursor right now. And what is happening is in our NVIDIA Jetson Nano, we have a Olama server running. And from that Olama server, it exposes a port. And on that port, you can run models like Llama and DeepSeek. And so what we're doing is on that port, we then route it using the service called ngrok. And if you've never heard ngrok, you can essentially expose a port from your machine to the internet on a free URL that they will provide. So on this URL right now, I have Olama server running. So if I click it and you can see it says Olama is running. On this URL, Olama is running. So Olama on the NVIDIA Jetson Nano is running and is accessible on this URL uh, from any co computer. So what we do from there is we take this and I'm not gonna go too deep the configuration of how I have everything set up, but what I am going to show you is the performance of it. In cursor, here's some of the settings that we did. Uh, what it asks, and fun fact, nothing worked outside of ngrok. Uh, I tried using Tailscale and exposing that to the web. Apparently nothing works except ngrok right now. And if Cursor wanted to, they could improve this, but they just haven't. I have no idea why. It also really adds a lot of variables on how many machines you can run on. Someone may not have the best configured machine or may not be the most powerful machine and new models come out and it would be really hard for cursor to keep a track of it. And they're not the most powerful models. They would rather give you like models, some Gemini flash, which are very cheap for them. And they can provide you those for free. So what we had to do was the URL that I just showed you, the ngrok URL, you have to put that in the override open UI, open AI base URL. And then here, there's not really an API key. You can literally type anything in here. Cursor just needs to have something in here. You enable these, you disable all of the other things. Don't have anything enabled. And I had, I did disable all of the models that Cursor provides. These are the models that we have in the Olama server. Okay, if I run in here, Olama list. So these are the models that we have loaded in on our server. So. Gemma, Quinn, GPT, the DeepSeek, and Llama. Essentially, you then after you put the URL and then you put the open AI key, which is any text, then all you have to do is do add custom model and you have to add the name of the model exactly like how this shows. So I copied this and you paste it in there. Uh, and that's what you see other models that are enabled here. So I'm going to show you a quick test on the very basic Llama 3.2 3B model. So all I'm gonna ask is that uh, it's on agent mode and Llama 3.2 3B. So this gave me the code to calculate pi to six decimal points. And you could copy this. So the one of the things is that even in agent mode, I haven't found any single model that will use the tools to create new Python files inside of cursor and then uh, even run any commands. When cursor is creating models and putting them in here, they have tools, but these local models do not have access to those kind of tools. They don't know how to access them. That's why they cannot create it, but they can generate you text. The second one definitely calculates that. We can do like a hundred decimal points, run this, gives us the value, which is pretty good. So this generates, gives you the uh, code blocks and it, it is all running on the Jetson server, which is absolutely like what we want. Now, if you try other models, like let's say a bigger model, like the basic thing that works is Llama. Even if I try GPT OSS, it does, it doesn't work because it's a 20 billion parameter model and the server only has eight gigabytes of RAM. So it just will error out saying the system memory is 11, it needs at least 11.6 and available is 8.8. .8, so it's just, it just won't work. And 
for even so I looked at what's the best model for coding the small one so this is a 7 billion parameter model the coin 2.5 coder 7b and if I try to do the same thing with this okay so it does start streaming things but it has not figured out how it can actually give out code blocks because Llama does a really good job, but Quinn does not seem to generate good code blocks. This is not the way we want our output to be. No matter what prompt I give it, uh, it kind of is the same. I'm also gonna show how the usage of the device goes up when I ask it a new question. So I'm gonna run JTOP and it's gonna show us the RAM usage, processor usage, and this is the GPU usage. And right now it's hovering 5.2, a bunch of it is also cached. And let's ask it a question. So as soon as I ask it a question, it clears the memory and then you'll see it start going up again. And uh, I actually hear the fans from here. It starts thinking the, and it starts giving you the output. It doesn't take a whole lot of RAM right now just cause it's a smaller model. It's only a three billion parameter model. So it only takes about like 2.83 ish gigabyte. And here you'll see, it uses a lot of memory. If we use the bigger model, which is the Quen model, it doesn't generate the stuff we actually want. We can also even try Gemma. Oh yeah, Gemma also does not work. Uh, let's try the Quen one again. If we do Quen, you see the GPU goes down again and it will start using it as soon as it loads the model. Yep, loads the model, usage goes up. And in the RAM, you can see how it also shoots up real quick and it's a bigger model. So we do not have enough free memory anymore. So from what you just saw, can you code? Yes. Is it the best way to code? No, not really. You're actually going to be way more better off just going onto the free version of ChatGPT and just asking it a question and copy pasting the code. It does give you the code technically. Yes, but only with a few selected models. It's not even fully supported by cursor to even use local models. You have to go through like a lot of hoops and jumps to actually even get it working. It's just not something that's really actually sustainable to do on like a day to day basis with big code bases. It can't even actually look at your code base and even understand what files you have. Uh, these local models don't even have access to your code base, the index that cursor creates and anything else. So. If you need just a basic code file, you give it some code and tell it, can you edit this for me? And it gives you an output and you copy paste it. Can that work locally? Yeah. And I mean, honestly, instead of even connecting it to cursor, you can run something like open web UI. It's a front end that looks like ChatGPT's front end. And then you have your Olama running with your AI models right here. And then it connects so you can ask it questions and then it connects to your Olama server, gets the question, runs it in the background and then gives you the output. So you may just be really better off doing that instead of trying to get it to run in cursor because that's just not feasible. I hope this answers some of your curious questions See to see if you can actually run local AI models to code in your IDEs. If you have any additional questions, let me know that in the comments and I will see you in the next one.